What was your, oh crap, my life is over, my parents are gonna end me moment that you had as a child or teen? I was getting bad grades in one class because I wasn't doing the homework. The teacher sent home a printed grade report, which I forged my mom's signature on and returned. When report cards came out, my mom emailed the teacher asking for an itemized grade report to see my grades. I knew my mom's email password. So I signed in and deleted the teacher's email as soon as it came in, and then permanently deleted it from the deleted folder. But then she told me to ask my teacher in person for a grade report since she hadn't gotten the email. I thought I could get him to print a copy, which I could Photoshop to look better. Instead, when I asked him, he just emailed it to her again, while I was at school and could not get to a computer to intercept it. Yeah, I got in trouble. Then I got in huge trouble later, when my parents learned I had been regularly forging grade reports. Well, OP, you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. That's all I gotta say about this one. Story 2. When I was about 8, my sister, 10, and I used to play around the neighborhood with other kids. But we had to be home by 8pm or when the streetlights came on, whichever came first. We had a watch on, and every evening my mom would make sure that we had one with us and it was working. One evening we were 20 minutes late, and it was the second time that week. If we were late twice in a week, we weren't allowed to go out the rest of the week. My sister and I were talking by the back garden gate making up excuses why we were late, and making sure we were both on the same page in case she questioned us. We opened the gate to go inside, and... My mum was standing on the other side of the gate, arms folded. That was a life flashed before my eyes moment. Story 3. I was sitting in my back garden with my best friend, and we'd recently acquired an air rifle. So obviously we started shooting it at things in an increasingly destructive manner, because we were 11. We shook up and banged out a can of coke and then laughed as it went nuts, spraying its contents everywhere. Then we got a can of deodorant and it was even more ridiculous, because it basically went bang but in a relatively harmless way. Then we got a can of shoe polish. Turns out shoe polish is, uh, a little bit more flammable. In fact, a bit more flammable than you might expect. The explosion set fire to my stepdad's shed. The can itself went straight up like a surface-to-air missile. Armed police arrived shortly after. At the time, I lived in reasonably central London, and this was in 1991, which just happened to be smack dab in the middle of the biggest ever spate of IRA terrorist attacks on the city. And a couple of months after, some IRA members had driven a motorboat up the Thames and fired mortar shells at the actual frickin' Houses of Parliament. The bollocking we got from the police was extreme, but it was nothing compared to the look in my mother's eyes the whole time it was going on. Because my friend and I knew that it was when the police left that things were going to get very bad indeed. The sense of apprehension even worse than a riot cop carrying a rifle screaming in our faces about how stupid we were. It was horrifying. We were doomed. And so it came to pass. She went absolutely frickin' mental. My mother's a mild-mannered person, but not that day. Not that day. It still terrifies me to think of almost 30 years later. Well, OP, that's a pretty dramatic screw-up. And hey, I bet you never did it again. Although, it's interesting, isn't it? Because you think about it and it's like, well, just from the outcome alone, OP probably would never have done this again. And yet they just get chewed out by the cops and then the mother, all for... What, exactly? I'm pretty sure OP knows how stupid that was. Like, it's probably just to get their frustrations out about it, right? Because it's stressful and stuff. But still, interesting to think about. Story 4. Was looking up some anime booba when I was around 12. I'd seen my fair share of FBI has charged you with adult content. Pay the court a fine and serve your sentence. Viruses and knew what to expect. One day I was doing my usual rounds around the hub, but decided to go down a rabbit hole of increasingly off-the-wall stuff out of dumb tween curiosity. I clicked on a video and suddenly I got redirected to a white page with a picture of handcuffs to the side. I clicked on tabs and tabs that all said, This account has been blocked. The text on the page itself was grammatically correct, and said stuff about how certain types of content were serious crimes and stuff like that. Immediately, I panicked, because this looked legit, even though what I was looking at wasn't anything illegal, just general weird stuff. I closed the internet, reopened Google, and got the same page. I shut down the computer, unplugged it, and started having a panic attack all through the house. I was alone. I started concocting a plan to deal with the police if they showed up at my house. Even thought of going out the way of ending myself by cop if they showed up to arrest me. And planned out a letter to my parents explaining I wasn't a pervert and I'm so sorry. Looked out the window every day for the police to show up, and they never did. Used the computer again and it was fine. Nothing happened at all. Have concluded that I got duped by a damn good virus. 
I browse very responsibly now. Story 5. I snuck out and took the car when I was 16 before I had a license to drive at night. I hit a pothole and blew a tire. I rode around on a shredded tire for two to three minutes before I drove up on a guy smoking a cigarette in his driveway. He helped me change it. The next morning, my parents woke up early and were going to take the car somewhere and the spare was still on. Luckily, this was right when the Goodyear or Firestone tires were all blowing out, and I told my parents that it happened earlier in the day the day before, and I just didn't have a chance to tell them. Story 6. I was 17. Drove my girlfriend home from school. We ended up in the shower together. Just as we turned off the water, and she was stepping out, we hear her dad open the front door of the house. Of course, my truck is in the driveway, so he knows I'm there, but I am nowhere else in the house, obviously. My short life flashed before my eyes. He came stomping down the hallway and banged on that bathroom door. My girlfriend, wrapped in a towel, answered the door and lied her butt off. OP is down the street at one of our friend's houses. I told him I'd call him when I was out of the shower. Meanwhile, I'm standing frozen and shriveled in the shower behind the curtain, preparing to meet the hereafter. Married that girl. Been together 26 years. Hey, OP. Props to your girlfriend and now wife for thinking on her feet. That is a huge save. Although, how did you manage to get out of the bathroom eventually? You must have been pretty sneaky about that to make it work. Story 7. I think I was four or five. There was a rock quarry slash gravel pit about a mile from my home that my parents didn't want me going to because of a bunch of unseemly youths hanging out there. So, of course, this is where my first flying experiment took place. I tied four kites to my bike and thought if I rode fast enough and then took my bike off the steepest bank of the quarry, the kites would lift off and I would glide to the bottom. Probably, luckily for me, the strings of the kites wound into the bike spokes and completely locked it, throwing me, so I slid all the way down the edge of the gravel pit rather than make a measured jump, scraped up to my elbows and from my knees down. All I could think of on that painful walk home dragging my busted bike full of kites was how my mom was going to end me. Suffice to say, when your five-year-old walks in looking like the finale of Carrie, you don't immediately jump to punishment. OP, your mother sounds very sweet for not absolutely chewing you out immediately. It's always nice to hear stories about parents who care about their child's health first, because, I don't know, I feel like we hear a lot of stories where that's not the case. That being said, what the hell, OP? You were five and doing this? I can't tell if you deserve a Nobel Prize or a Darwin Award, because it's kind of, I mean, genius in a very childlike kind of way, but also just so, so dangerous. You are lucky the kites got wound up in your bike spokes, holy. You could have been hurt a lot worse. Story 8. When I was 12, we were visiting my mom's family for Christmas and staying at my aunt's house like we usually did. Behind her house was a creek that ran through most of the neighborhood. This particular year, it had been really cold, and there was snow at least six inches deep in most places. I was out playing in the snow and looked back at the creek. I saw some weird icicles that I wanted to get a closer look at. I crossed a fallen log to get to the opposite side of the creek, facing the back of my aunt's house, and I walked along the bank looking at the ice. Basically, the creek was flowing and not frozen, but there was a shelf that had frozen above it, and the ice hanging from it had formed into teardrop shapes instead of the typical spikes. As I walked, I neglected to see a patch of ice on the bank in front of me, and stepped on it with my full weight. I slipped and slid fully into the creek, which was way deeper than I had anticipated. I was wearing a winter coat, jeans, and insulated boots, all of which became incredibly heavy when wet. I was up to my armpits trying to desperately stay afloat in the freezing cold water and heavy clothes. My only thought was my mom is gonna be so mad. Obviously, I survived. I pulled myself out, stumbled up the bank to a building that I thought was a YMCA and turned out to actually be a fire station, and they called my mom. She came to get me and no harm no foul, and I wasn't in any trouble. Although my entire family still mocks me and asks if I'd like to go for a swim every Christmas. This is surprisingly calm for what could have been the end of you, OP. Maybe I'm too pessimistic about things, but that sounds like a, a bad situation. Heavy clothes on a child, in water, cold water at that? Maybe if I saw the actual situation, I'd be like, oh, it's not that bad, like, you can climb up, or... I don't know, it sounds bad to me, though. Story 9. Every single day, my mom told me to be careful near the frozen pond next to our house. One day, enough snow had melted in order for my friends and I to play soccer in the field next to the pond. As you can guess, at one point, the ball ended up dead center in the middle of the pond on the ice. My child brain figured if I could throw a stick on the ice, it was safe to walk on. So after making sure the ice was stable by throwing not one, but two sticks, I started my walk. It was like a scene from a movie. I reached the center, and the second I picked up the ball and attempted to turn around, I fell straight through the ice and went under. I had to break the ice the entire way back to shore and had my clothes dried at a friend's house a few blocks away. By the time I got there, I thought I was on my deathbed. But I could never tell my mom I was dumb enough to go out there. She probably would have ended me. I'm 26 now and still have never told my parents. Story 10. 
I just got my first job ever at Ace Hardware, and a weekend my buddies hit me up asking if I wanted to head to the beach for the next week. I was like, yeah, of course. So I told my boss at work a family member died and I couldn't come in the next week. So my boss called my dad, who also works for the owner of the company in a different department. He starts telling him, I'm so sorry for your loss. Please let me know if I can do anything to help. My dad was like, what do you mean? What happened? And he ended up telling my boss I lied about the entire thing. I still got the week off and went on vacation, but the next few days at my job were nerve-wracking, to say the least. I love how- <laughs> that's so funny. The immediate reaction is like, I need time off work. What do I do? Say I'm sick? No, I can't plan to be sick. Ah, a family member has died. Surely that's not verifiable whatsoever, especially not with my father, who is at the company. OP, I can't believe you didn't face more consequences for this, but that's hilarious. Story 11. This story takes place in the mid-90s. I was 16, skipping school out screwing around in my car with friends. Took a turn too fast and put the car in a ditch. We got the car out of the ditch with the help of a passerby. Not a scratch on it by some frickin' miracle. Get home and dad asks, So, how was school? In a way that told me he knew full well that I wasn't at school. If there is one thing my father instilled in me, it's this. No matter how bad you screw up, lying will only make it worse. Own up, take the punishment, don't do it again. So I told him exactly what happened. He couldn't really take the car away because I'd purchased it from him for full trade and value out of money I'd saved from working at a pizza joint. But he found other ways to make my life a living hell for a few months after that. Come to find out, the Good Samaritan who helped us out of the ditch was a co-worker of my dad. He recognized the car and had called dad to let him know about my adventures. Story 12. When I was 16, I was going through this emo and punk phase, and I decided one day I wanted to put colored streaks in my hair. So I went to Walgreens and bought this semi-permanent red dye for dark hair, because I had no idea how to bleach my hair. I get home, apply the dye, and think I'm gonna look so awesome that it'll be worth if my parents get mad. I had no idea what I was doing. Instead of ending up with red streaks throughout my hair, I ended up with a huge red splotch at the top of my head, because all the dye clumped together or something. It looked terrible, and was no longer worth getting in trouble for. The next morning I see my mom. She takes one look at my hair and bursts into laughter and tells me, <laughs> Wow, you really screwed up, didn't you? She wasn't mad. She thought it was hilarious. And after a bit of teasing, she went to Walgreens and got me a box of black hair dye so I could cover it up and not have to go outside looking like that. W mom. That's all I gotta say here. W mom. Story 13. When I was in third grade, I brought my brand new Beyblade to school to show one of my friends. During PT period, I carried it with me in my pocket, because there was this stupid rumor about surprise bag checks when children aren't in the classroom. Guy behind me in the line saw it and told the PT teacher. The Beyblade was confiscated. I tried to act cool in front of the other kids, but I was scared crapless that my parents would find out. After going home, I pretended to search for my Beyblade everywhere, so that my mom would think that it's lost. My elder brother was in the same school as me, and it scared me even more that someone from my class would tell him about this. Our family moved to a different place, and we moved to a different school the following year, so to this day, nobody knows. Now I'm 21, and this story makes me laugh every time I think about it. Story 14. My mom left 14-year-old me and my 8-year-old brother alone at home to run an errand. I don't remember what he did, but he royally upset me, and I had a bad temper as a teenager. So I chucked a cordless phone at his face. He started bleeding everywhere, and we both panicked. I had knocked out one of his teeth. So he ran to the bathroom to see which one, bawling the whole time. As it turns out, it was his extra tooth. He was scheduled to have it pulled a few days later. So then the angry tears turned into grateful tears. He avoided a trip to the dentist. We did still have to call my mom though. You know, so she knew why he was suddenly missing a tooth. He confirmed that he was glad I knocked it out. And she went, uh, I have to think about this. I was grounded. Edit. This is now one of those stories that we tell because we think it's hilarious. My parents had us each six or seven years apart, so growing up we had a lot of dumb fights. The younger ones still do. It's this particular brother's birthday today, so he's at my house, and he was proud that this was my response to this particular question. His exact thoughts about the story were, After I realized it was the extra tooth, it was frickin' amazing. Story 15. When I was bored and I threw a tiny firecracker into the toilet. The problem is it was one of those wall-mounted toilets, so the bottom was relatively thin. The first few hadn't exploded. The fuse just burned up and that's it. The third one... I missed, so it landed on the edge of the toilet. Those few seconds were enough for the second part of the fuse to start, and as it fell in, I was expecting it to create a sizable splash. So I got out of the bathroom. As soon as it exploded, I felt something wasn't right. I opened the door, and lo and behold, the bottom was totally wrecked. Wall and ceiling were covered with a mixture of water and gunpowder. My mom was at work, and I had about two or three more hours to fix it. I called my grandpa, since we were slash are very close. I told him what I did and asked him if he would fix it. 
Of course, fixing a ceramic toilet is not that simple, so we went to a Home Depot-style shop to buy a new one. The first one we got wouldn't fit, so we had to go back for another one. We got there 15 minutes before closing, exchanged them, removed the broken one, mounted the new one, and I quickly cleaned the bathroom. My mom, who I live with, still has no idea that ever happened. Grandpa told Grandma the drain pipe was leaking, so he came to fix it. My mom, of course, noticed the smell of ceramics glue, but I told her that I accidentally spilled hand sanitizer. We moved out of there and nobody has ever noticed it. Hopefully, they never will. I keep away from firecrackers and my grandpa and I have a new, pretty expensive secret. Story 16. My parents had just left for vacation. I got pulled over doing 85 and a 45. Cop didn't write me a ticket but gave me his phone number and told me to have my parents call him by 6 p.m. He told me if I didn't get a call, he was going to issue a warrant for my arrest. Mind you, this was before cell phones were very reliable. I left a message with the receptionist at their hotel letting them know they needed to call home as soon as they checked in, saying it was an emergency. The cop told them there was no way he could write me a ticket that didn't result in me losing my license. And being that I was just a dumb young kid being dumb, he didn't want to do that. He instructed them to put the fear of God in me, and he would put the matter behind him. Needless to say, it was not my finest moment as a son. 85 and 45 is pretty egregious, OP. It's pretty dumb, man. Like, I, <laughs> it's pretty dumb. But I do think the people around you handled it in a decent way. Hopefully, you never did it again. Right, OP? Story 18. It was a warm spring day. We were juniors. And so a bunch of us cut school to swim and drink beer at the beach. I ran into a girl I hardly knew, and after a couple of bottles of beer, I asked her if she wanted to go home with me, since my folks were at work and my siblings were at school. So we went to my house and we banged. She's getting dressed in the bathroom, and who would walk in but my mother? She had taken a mental health day from work. Funny now, not funny at all, to my pious Catholic mom. It took months for everything to calm down. When I was an adult, my father was like, Why the hell do you have to drag mom into it? Why don't you check the house first? But hey... I did the deed, and in 1962, that was something. And it was a long time before I ever did it again. Story 19. I was 19, I think. And you would think that's old enough to not have a curfew, or at least have a curfew of midnight or something, but nope. I'm a woman, and my parents are from the Balkans. I was not supposed to be out after dark unless I'm with family. This takes place in the US, by the way. So I get sick of how strict my parents are and decide to sneak out. My parents always went to bed around 10. I would also make sure to be in bed around that time. Once I was sure they were asleep, I would crawl out my window, carefully make my way across the roof, second story, to the wood pile at the side of our house. It was pretty high, so I would lower myself onto it, then jump from the wood pile to our deck and go across ours and our neighbor's backyard to the road over. I would make my way to the street corner where one of my friends would pick me up. I did all of this just to go bowling or go to a movie with my friends. Sometimes we would just go to a friend's house and play Warcraft. It was all really innocent, honestly. One night I was at the bowling alley with a group of friends and I got a call. It was my mom. My heart dropped into my stomach. I picked up. She said dad woke up and checked in on me and I wasn't in my room. She asked where I was because she was coming to pick me up right now. I lied and said I was at a friend's house. I don't know why I lied. I was at a bowling alley. I think because it was like 20 minutes out of town, I don't know. She said she was coming get me. I begged one of my friends to drive me to where I just told her I was. It was embarrassing because my friends tried to understand, but they just couldn't. Just a lot of stuff like why am I going running when my parents called, I'm 19 not 12, stuff like that. What they didn't know was that growing up in a foreign family, physical violence is very common. It's not their fault, I didn't talk about it. And honestly, I'm glad most of them have never experienced that sort of home life. So a friend dropped me off, and my mom was waiting and took me home. She was grilling me on where I'd been and what I'd been doing. Once we got home, my dad slapped me around, which was no big deal. But then he went to go get his belt, and my mom stopped him, saying I had to work and go to school, and it would be obvious I took a beating if I favored my back. I did have some bruises on my face, so I stayed away from my friends till it healed. Which was easy, as my parents only let me out of the house for school or work after that. It used to be something I looked back on now as an adult in my 30s and laughed about. Oh, that time I got caught sneaking out. But rereading what I just wrote? I just wasn't right. Being ashamed of my home life and keeping it a secret from my friends, being hit and controlled? It's crazy the kinds of things you normalize because you have to. Although this kind of discipline is, I don't know, slightly more normalized, or at least more popular, I guess, in places that aren't North America, it's definitely not an excuse for it to have family from a different region. Like, people make arguments for spanking their children that I still think are kind of absurd. It just seems like a lot of mental gymnastics to hit your kid. But then this is just 
extreme, man. You are not teaching your child anything, especially at 19. There is no learning going on here except for how to hate your parents. I don't know. This kind of child abuse stuff, it, it really ticks me off, man. Story 20. As a kid, my father and I would occasionally take weekend trips a couple hours down the road to see my grandfather and step-grandmother and stay in their house with them. These trips were fun because they were like mini vacations, and both my grandfather and step-grandmother were veritably some of the coolest people you'd ever meet in your life. I actually didn't get to know them until I was half grown. They were a disconnected part of my family. Sometimes my dad would leave me with them for the weekend. My step-grandma had a fully kitted out, for the time, desktop computer in her office at her house. She was computer savvy and much younger than my grandfather father. Me being a gamer, I was definitely interested in her computer, and she let me browse the internet on it sometimes. This was back when a fast internet-enabled computer in the house was less than common. One night when all the adults were doing boring adult stuff and talking in the den, I snuck into the office to use the computer. Didn't have any ill intent at first. Just wanted to browse Cartoon Network or whatever. But that night, I then had a fresh thought pop into my brain. I pulled up the very old original version of Google and looked up free adult content. With my heart pounding, I browsed some sites, all of which were very cringy and tame by today's standards. All the good stuff was hidden with starbursts and lens flares. I looked at the sites for a little while and then left the room thinking I'd gotten away with it. I didn't know that they could check the history. My grandparents approached me later and told me they knew what I'd done. They asked me to confess, and I did. Then asked how I thought I should be punished. At which point I told them I was pretty sure my dad was going to be angry and beat my butt when we told him. But predictably, I said I don't think I deserved that. They said I was forgiven and I apologized. My dad didn't spank me for it like I expected him to. I think my grandfather had a private heart-to-heart -heart with him or either didn't tell him at all. Seems silly in hindsight, but at the time, I felt like I'd been caught red-handed with a murder weapon. Story 21. When I was about 14, I had my bedroom in the basement. My mom and I had been arguing about something, and I don't remember what. I was talking back and generally just being a jerk teenager, when she said, You son of a... I replied with, Well, if I'm a son of a, what does that make you? It was one of those things where it popped into my head because I'd heard it used as a comeback before, but my internal filter wasn't working as fast as my mouth. I knew immediately that this was not going to end well. I ran and tried to hide from the incoming onslaught. I lived, but I saw my life flash before my eyes in the time it took her to descend the stairs. Story 22. I was about nine years old shopping at Party City with my mom and my four-year-old sister. We walked near an aisle full of Halloween masks, so I snuck over and put on the scariest one I could find. I waited for my mom and sister to almost reach the end of one aisle until I started a full-on, intentionally loud sprint their way. At the very last second, my sister turns around to see a demon screaming at her about six inches from her face. I've never seen so much true fear in someone's eyes, and I felt awful. I had never really felt bad for picking on my younger sister until that moment. My mom was furious with me, rightfully so, and swore that her and my dad were going to scare me even worse than I scared her. For years, I was checking around corners and terrified to take the trash out at night. I even resorted to a nightlight for far longer than I would like to admit. It wasn't until I was about 20 years old that I told them I had been afraid they were going to scare me for literally half my life. They didn't even remember me scaring my sister at all, and never made an attempt but they scared me for 10 plus years, so I think it's safe to say that they got me back. Sometimes the threat of a punishment is worse than the punishment itself, and in this case, it was the punishment. They didn't mean it to be, but it was. OP punished himself, and that's hilarious. Story 23. Early 2000s, I was in high school. My parents were separated, and my dad was trying to talk to me through some video driver issues from a few states away. He'd called while I'd been familiarizing myself with a gentleman's special interest website. Dad gets a little frustrated and tells me to launch VNC and accept a session. Suddenly, my mouse is moving on its own. True horror dawned on me, as my dad says, Alright, let's see what's going on. And the mouse minimized the control panel, revealing a browser open to a gallery of a splendidly disrobing Canadian starlet. The longest pause over the phone in my life. I moused over to the browser's X and closed the window in dead silence, and then Dad started laughing. Like, he hurt himself. He was hoarse and winded by the time he was done. Made a couple settings adjustments, fixed the video problem, and closed the VNC. Never said a word about it. And that was how I learned about remote desktops. Dad handled this like a champ. What else can you do other than laugh? Yeah, obviously your child did not mean to show you that. It was clearly a mistake, and it's a hilarious one. 
And look, Dad was young once too. I think he gets it. Story 24. My bedroom was upstairs and it would get really hot, so I had an air conditioner in the window all summer. I had two friends over and somehow we had a necklace that belonged to a girl we didn't like. We decided it would be a good idea to throw it out the window. Nine-year-old girls are petty apparently. The plan was that I would hold the air conditioner, friend one would open the window, and friend two would throw the necklace out. Well, turns out air conditioners are heavy as hell, so of course it fell. It landed on the stairs to the back door and both the air conditioner and the stairs were destroyed. I freaked out. I started saying my parents were going to make me do chores for my entire life to pay for it. I ran and hid in the woods and bawled. My parents weren't even mad. My dad said, It's just an air conditioner. We're just glad no one got hurt. Looking back, I really admire them for their reaction. We weren't doing well financially, and it would have been really easy to get mad at me for being freaking stupid and ruining an expensive appliance. We didn't even have to replace it because my dad is a wizard and fixed it. Story 25. One day my mom had to pick up my sister from somewhere at like 2pm. After she left, I proceeded to lock the door of the house and go back to my room to watch YouTube or whatever. At some point, I felt really fatigued and laid on my bed, which led me to instantly falling asleep. Fast forward some unknown time period. The sun was already setting and I heard weird noises coming from the front door. Realizing what I had done, I ran to the door and found a locksmith trying to open the door, and my almost fainting mother being consoled by two neighbors and my sister. To make matters worse while I was asleep, my neighbors gave misleading information that maybe I'd been getting out of the house as she left. My mother called all my friends and my girlfriend to try and contact me, and since I was asleep, they had all become desperate that they couldn't contact me. The locksmith saw all the commotion and charged double for opening the door that my mother unhesitatingly agreed to pay for. I got her so worried that all she did was hug me for some time, and then tell me how scared I've made her. I felt guilty for the rest of the month. This one is a really sweet one to end it on, which we are going to because we're out of stories, but I don't know, I really like the stories of parents being more understanding and compassionate and loving, as opposed to the ones where they are abusive. I don't think that's a crazy thing to say. I can definitely see why everyone would be really worried, and OP is lucky to have so many people in his life that would be so worried for him. Just a really sweet, touching one to end it off. Thanks, OP. For now, though, thank you so much for watching. I'm sure that a good number of you have stories that fit into this topic, so if you do, let me hear them. What did you do that put the fear of your parents into you? For now, though, have a wonderful day or night, wherever you are, and I will see you in the next one.